Well, hello again, world. Welcome back to Golf Subpar with Colt Nost and Drew Stoltz. Sleazy man, you know, there's been a guy that has been a fixture atop the leaderboards on the PGA Tour this fall, and he finally ended up the top man. Taylor Gooch picked up his first W on the PGA Tour down at the RSM. Fear the Gooch. That's what the rest of the PGA Tour is thinking right now. What a f Dude, this kid's had an unbelievable fall. I say, kid, he's 30 years old. He's paid his dues. He's played other tours coming up. Took him a couple times to get through Q school before he got Corn Ferry status, and now he's playing some of the best golf on the planet. Six events this fall he's played, five times inside the top 11. That's hard to do, and I just feel like it's just week after week after week where you're more surprised when you don't see him up there than when you are. And this is kind of, you know, we talk about the fall season. It's not always the best fields of the year, but it gives guys a chance, like Taylor Gooch, to come out and, like, really – announced themselves on the PGA Tour because he's been a he's been a monster. Well, he has been a monster, and he is number one on the FedEx Cup points list heading into the 2022 year. He is uh, – it's going to be interesting to see. You know, he was a guy who was 51 in the official world golf rankings heading into the RSM. He knew, you know, this is basically the last event of the year to pick up world ranking points. Getting that top 50 before the year ends, you get the invite to Augusta. He just went out and took care of business and got the W. Pretty impressive considering he – he, we had him on our Sirius XM show. He knew where he stood. He knew he had to play well go this week. Yeah, he goes ahead and gets all the invitationals, all the free money events, locked up the Masters. He And to do it the way he did, like, you know, winning for the first time on the PGA Tour is hard. Winning any time is hard on the PGA Tour. First time he goes out there and does it with a bogey-free 64 final round. He joined an elite group of company in the last four years that's shot 64 when they've been holding the uh, – when they've held the 54-hole lead going into a Sunday. And it's like DJ, Rory – Brooks it's guys like that very few guys have done it most guys kind of have a hard time closing the door you know cruise in there try to hope hopefully nobody comes up from behind them and then Gooch man just went ahead and put it to bed quickly like 16 greens and 64 and final round Sunday to get your first win pretty damn good that'll do and surprise surprise Colin Morikawa gets the job done once again over in Dubai wins the race to Dubai winning becoming the only American to ever do that Wins the, wins the Tour Championship over there, just brings home a cool $4 million bucks, and just does it in perfect Colin Morikawa style. I mean, plays perfect golf, does the perfect post-game interview. It's just it's, it's incredible. What a year for Colin Morikawa. Yeah, he's the hard one to live up to for the uh, Victor Hovland, <laughs> Matthew Wolf bucket that they like to throw all those guys in. The guy has put himself into a, a new bucket at this point, but he just seems to do everything right, say everything right. He moved to the right state because he got out of California and moved to Vegas, and so he's keeping a lot more of that $4 million that he just won this week. The kid's, the kid's dino, and, I mean, he didn't even play many of the European events, just majors, WGCs, things like that, comes over, plays the last event of the year, but, like, oh, yeah, I'll take your ultimate prize, too, with me. And, I mean, he's got – he's played eight majors. He's won two of them. He wins a 10% clip. He's only played 60 events as a pro, and he's won six times now. I mean, he's, he's just setting the bar differently for all these young guys coming up out of college, like – Here's the new benchmark. It's Colin Morikawa, and it's a tough one to live up to. Well, the only thing he can do to top off an incredible year would be to come on Golf Subpar, which I'm working on right now, Sleaze. I think we got it I think if we he, got him in pencil right now. If he really wants to launch his career into the next stratosphere, there's only one thing left to do. Totally. Come right here. Have a couple. Sit down with the fellas yeah. and chop it up. Well, those boys had a much better week on the golf course than I did. I can tell you that, Sleaze. You I had an incredible week. Last time we spoke, I was getting ready for Augusta National. I went out. I hit the over. I shot 77. By the all hook. The way back. Just the you got hook. hooked. I bogeyed 18. Yeah. Absolute failure. Place is hard. It is 7,500 from all the way back. It was kind of chilly. No wind. It played so ridiculously long. I mean, listen, I, I've done my time now from the back tees there. If I ever get invited back, I'm, I'm more than comfortable to go up to the members tees. Member. Members where it where, belongs. How many woods into par fours? I, I, a number what? Number three, you got a wedge in. May tweet there. Way to go. I did. My, my only birdie took the advantage. Day number three. Other than that, dude, it's lumber for days around there. I, I, I mean, you know, my longest iron is a five iron. I got I got Gary. He I, could, yeah, I, I texted he Gary. In. Gary Woodland asked me how Augusta was afterwards. I was like, my God, it's long. He said, good thing Gary's your favorite club. I said, Gary wasn't enough to get to most of the greens there. My four hybrid came up a little short a few times. But there was a lot – of head covers taken off that day. But, man, it was so cool. Just number 12, coolest hole on the planet, in my opinion. Just the gorgeous par three. Pin to over on the left side the day I played it. Thank God it wasn't over in Jordan Spieth's spot over there on the right. But it was so funny talking to the caddy who's been there for years, obviously. We just played number 11, which they have a new tee box, and it's 20 yards longer. Good. Great. Makes it even harder. 530 yeah. is the right number. But it's dead into the wind, right? And number 12 is the same direction. Yeah. So you walk on the tee, you're like, oh, well. It's blowing into the wind. He's like, listen, here's how this works. You know, 11's, it's coming in from over there through 13 T-Box, but it hits these trees and it actually spins 
So it makes the play actually downwind. I'm like, my God, I'm so confused. Just give me a yardage, and I'll just try to figure this thing out. But it ended up being – he said, give me a 155 shot. I hit a hard eight iron about 15 feet par. No big deal. People would – you could buy that, bottle it up, and sell that thing for a bunch on Sunday in April. But how about that? Like, just round means nothing. Sure, you want to play good. It's your mm-hmm. first time at Augusta National. You know, we're going to talk about it on here. But it means nothing. Imagine tied for the lead oh. coming home, and that thing's moving around. You don't know whether it's a nine, a wedge, an eight. It could be anything – and every single person that goes through that hole says the exact same thing. Like, dude, you just cannot tell. And it, like, from five seconds, one, you know, you're getting ready to hit, and then five seconds later, you're going to hit it, it could be a completely different win. I can see Beast. it being full panic because, I mean, you've got, you know, basically five, six paces short of the pin to where you're in the soup, and about five, six paces back past it, you're dead. I mean, you could be in the azaleas back There's there. nowhere to miss. Yeah. yeah it's, it's either miss front and drop or miss long yeah. and try to go find it. How many tweets? Just one. Number three. Hit three? It to a couple okay. of feet. Just a little kick in. Got off to a little bit of a rough start. Missed a couple short ones. Kevin Kisner's event got the best of me the night before. But it's okay. I had a blast. 77. Hit a lot of great putts. A lot of lip outs. But no big deal. But then I proceeded to work my way on over across the country to Pebble Beach. So this was, what, was a, a what a run. Week. Yeah. Played, Things will turn around, yeah. dude. Keep your head up. Played Spyglass a couple times. Teed it up in the TaylorMade Invitational. Played Spyglass twice. Um, Spanish Bay. And then Pebble one day. Caught Pebble on just a gorgeous day. Hardly any wind. Went out. Got to take advantage of the first seven. As you know, Pebble Beach. Went out, was four under through seven. Was there you feeling go. it, feeling it. And then I made a couple bogeys to get a little more back in my comfort. Yeah, zone. dude, you don't want to get too red early. Start freaking out. But ended up shooting 70 at Pebble, um, two under, birdied 18. Solid, Strong. Solid finish. But went over and then played Spanish Bay, shot one under. And then I got to play Spyglass, the monster. Got the best of me, a little three over par 75 to miss the cut by a couple, which was fine because I got to fly, get on my buddy's bird. Fly home to Scottsdale Sunday morning, be on my couch for football all day. It was glorious. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. There should be two divisions in that tournament. One, yes. they need to have like, all right, here's the guys that are going to have a good time, get after it a bit at night, and then here's the guys that are grinding. They got the track man. I think there needs to be a BAC test given out at about 10 o'clock each night before the next round. If you're below a certain amount, all right, you're in this division. If you're above, you go into this division, split the purse, two different divisions. Well, you know which division I would be in. Well, yeah, I would expect I you to. I had my thirty-seven dollar transfusions. Next that's, to I me. mean, that's criminal. <laughs> Crim- I would. You need a. You need a G bird to get around. Just not even counting the 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 greens fees. Yep. So thirty-seven dollar transfusion and a cup holder, and then my rock form up to the left, playing the music, playing my country music. You had what you needed. Had a volunteer, one of the volunteers there at the Pebble Beach Invitational. He's like, man. He goes, I listen to y'all's show every week. I love the rock form. I just wish y'all sold. The birdie juice ones. I said, well, good news is there's something coming. We're going to do a little giveaway. So, my man, get in the contest, which we're going to tell you all about later, and make sure you're entered to try to win the birdie juice rock form. But let's talk a little bit about rock form, please. People don't believe me. I got there on Tuesday night. I played golf Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Four days in a row. And these are not short rounds. These are five and a half hour these rounds. These are real deal Adam okay? ups. We get on the plane Saturday morning. My boy Bob says, I want you to DJ. Bring your speaker. Do it. I was like, okay, I didn't charge it. Should be fine though. I look at the battery, scroll over on my phone. It's not even halfway finished yet. Yeah, it's one of the best features of the thing. You can because everyone brings it out. You play a tournament, it's three days, whatever. Of course, after the round, you go in, have a couple, and you forget to bring it home and charge it or whatever. You don't even need to in this thing. I mean, you could play Q School six rounds if they were allowing music out there. This thing would make it all the way through. One of the best features of the thing. Also, waterproof when you get up a place like Pebble. Never know what you oh. might run into. A little rain, a little squall no comes through. No stress. Maybe the transfusion, you maybe hit a bump, pops up on the thing. No big deal. Cup holder is available. I mean, it's got – I've not had one person who's bought this thing been like, this isn't, isn't the best. It is legitimately is the best. And it's hard to break, too. I've dropped mine before. That'll happen, too. You know what I mean? Hands get a little slippery. You get a little nervous. No problem. Pop it back on. Bam. Still live. Yeah, you're playing up in the mountains. You have no cell phone service. Micro SD card stores up to 5,000 songs. I'm telling you, you got to go to rockform.com and pick you up a speaker. Because it is, there's, it's not even comparable to anything else. It links to your phone too. If your phone happens to ring out there, you want to take a call. Boom, you can do it on the speaker. Maybe it's the wifey or the girlfriend. But like, when are you getting home, you say like, "Hey, oh, it's playing so slow out here. I'm on hole 12." When really you're about to tap in on 18 and give you you another hour and a half or two. We only have four percent uh, female listenership or whatever, so we're safe. All right. The ones that listen and get it. Well, Rockform also has phone cases that are second to none, and their ecosystem of mounts helps you put information where you need it the most. Be sure to take advantage of their Black Friday sale that started yesterday. Enter code THANKS21 for 30% off your entire order. That's THANKS21 at rockform.com. All right, so 
We got a beauty of a guest this week. We got the one, the only Bud Colley in the house. One of my favorite guys out on the PGA Tour. The guy has potential for days, even as a young buck coming up. He had two career options. One, go into child modeling, which he did, dipped his toe in the water. That could have been massive. And then he also had golf, which luckily he was the best kid to ever turn. He's like he and Brian Harmer, just the two kids when I think of like, who's been good for forever? It's those two guys. He came out, he picked golf, tended, it, uh, ended up working out for him, but could have gone the male modeling route. But Dude, this guy, when he gets healthy, and we'll get into some of his injuries and stuff, he's just one of those guys when you play with him, it's like, so where do the bad, where do the bogeys happen? Uh-huh. He never hits it. It's a lot like Chez, maybe, when he's going. It's just like over and over, just, just lazy. Powerful Chez. Ne- yeah, it's like a, little, it. like a little Chez micro machine on steroids. He goes, man. He just never hits bad shots. And somehow, Lurch from Foreplay didn't know who he was. That's disappointing. A guy like Bud, probably, rec- probably could have recognized him from the child modeling days. He that's, was everywhere. That's exactly pin what up. He was a pinup. All right, well, before we get to Bud Collie, i got to tell you a little bit about Rap Soto. This launch monitor is absolutely incredible, Slays. I've been using this when I've been out on the range at Silverleaf in Whisper Rock. This thing is so cool. It is very small, which is very easy to carry around. It's basically the size of your rangefinder holder. Very easy. Just connect your phone, prop your phone up on it. It's got an easy little, little alignment system. This thing is so accurate. Who needs to spend twenty thousand dollars when you can spend five hundred on on a launch monitor that basically tells you all the same information? It records every one of your golf swings. So you want to hit a shot, you're like, oh, wonder how that one looked. Let's go back and look at it. Has shot tracer. It's unbelievable. It is so accurate. You can use it indoors, outdoors. It is a no brainer if you're in the in the market for a new launch monitor. If you are anyone that's not a tour pro and is going to go spend twenty racks plus on a track man, this is it because it gives you virtually everything. Like you said, it's within two percent accuracy of some of these. You know, more expensive units. Our boy, Mark Blackburn, our coach, is one of the uh, Rapsodo advice. He's on the Rapsodo advisory board. So if it's good enough for Mark, you know, it's good enough. Like you said, it videos your swing. I mean, it literally gives you everything you could want without having to break the bank. Your PGA National Teacher of the Year and you endorse a product, that means you believe in it. So definitely go to rapsodo.com slash subpar and receive $150 off your order and 30 days free of Rapsodo's premium subscription by using promo code subpar. Once again, that's rapsodo, R-A-P-S-O-D-O dot com slash subpar. 150 bucks off. Go get you a rapsodo. Perfect for the holidays. All right, here he is, our man Bud Colley on Golf Subpar. All right, we got a bona fide dude with us here today. One of the only guys to ever get his tour card without ever having gone to Q school. Longtime PGA Tour player, also one hell of a cornhole player. He really just does it all. Recently married, Bud Colley. How we doing? What's going on, guys? Good to be with you, brother. Recently married, maybe the most important thing in that intro there. How we how we doing? You're fresh off it. Yeah, so far so good. Uh, I guess what almost three weeks in now. So you know, I haven't. I don't think I've drove her crazy yet. So we'll see. Give it a little time. How many how Wait many nights in three weeks have you slept on the couch or in the guest room? Uh, so far, none. All but, right, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Off to hot, hot start. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Things go good. But, you know, a lot of people know you You had a tough car accident back in 2018 when you got hurt. How are you feeling? I think your last event was in 2020, correct? Yeah, uh, the event in Napa, uh, last time I played. Uh, it's starting to get there. Um, hitting some balls, kind of going back and forth, just trying to get it, uh, you know, ironed out. Still getting some pain what I've been hitting. But, um Getting a bunch of treatment, doing everything I can, so hoping to get back out there as soon as possible. What's the What's the biggest issue right now? Well, I mean, it just it hurts. You know, I was in that accident, broke a bunch of ribs, so it's kind of in my rib area that I'm been getting all the, the pain and stuff. So, um, you know, had some good days and bad days. Had a few surgeries, a bunch of different treatments. So, just trying to you know work through it. It was a unfortunate thing that happened, but you know, just trying to get through it and. Luckily, golf's a game you can play your whole life, so, you know, hopefully I'll be able to get this figured out and then, you know, get back to playing uh, like I used to. Ideal timeline if everything went perfect. You got any any date scheduled that you could get back out there? Not anything that specific. I mean, I, I'd love to get back out there next year. That's kind of my plan right now. You know, sometimes it's a little overwhelming to think about, you know, getting healthy and getting my game back like you said it's been a while since i've played so that can be a little overwhelming sometimes but first things first to get healthy and then get my game back and hopefully get out there sometime next year yeah you mentioned you know get your game back to where it was i mean you've been a superstar since you were just a little guy i mean you still are a little guy 
but since a younger age, I guess I should say uh, you're a superstar. Uh, <laughs> you're a superstar in the AJGA. Yeah. Tell us a little bit. About, I mean, you ended up going to Alabama, but what was the recruiting process for you? Because I mean, you were an absolute stud. Yeah, you know, it, I mean, looking back, it was. I grew up kind of a Florida fan, growing up in Jacksonville most of my childhood. Florida was close. Loved the Gators, and then. Uh, one of my best friends at the time was Spencer Cole and he went to Alabama. He was a year older than I was. So that's what really got me kind of looking at Alabama and took a couple of visits, had a great time, met coach Sewell, one of the still to this day, one of the nicest guys I've ever met. So, um, you know, went there, loved all the guys on the team. And, you know, one of the best decisions I ever made was, you know, going to the university of Alabama. Where would you rank Sleaze and I on that? Nicest guys you ever met list. I just assume we're one and two, and it just starts at three. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> Did you get to meet Saban when you went down there on your trip? I'm sorry? Did you meet Coach Saban when you went on your recruiting trip? Uh, I didn't meet him on my recruiting trip, but, you know, got to know him and met him quite a few times, uh, you know, once I was there. Even after I finished school, my, my rookie year on tour, he and I played – uh, the tournament in uh, Pebble Beach together, which was a lot of fun. So, um, you know, it's kind of funny to see him out of his element, you know, on a golf course. You see him around practice or in the, you know, the football, uh, on the football field. He's so comfortable and confident. But you get him out there and to see a guy like that a little nervous was was pretty funny. Is he is he still intense on the golf course? You know, I haven't I haven't played with him in a while, but I, he doesn't do too many things where he's not intense. So if I had to, if I had to make that, I'd say yeah. What's he like though off the football field? Like if you're just out at the, the golf course hanging out, hitting balls with him, whatever. Like, what's the biggest difference between him? We see him in the press conference, and then the dude that's just hanging out. Well, I mean, you know, just like anybody, you get golfers out there a lot more intense on the golf course. You get them off the course, they're a little more laid back and relaxed. Um, you know, he, he's really passionate about golf. So you see him out there, you know, really working on his game and trying to get better, which was, you know, which was cool. But, um, you know, really just, you know, nice guy. I remember playing with him. He was always asking me about my game and even a little input on. I didn't putt so well that week when we played together. So he kept telling me if I could, you know, get the flat stick figured out that I, I might have something going. But um, so that was cool just for him to take an interest in me and, you know, have that experience with him. Yeah, that's so cool. Obviously, you had an incredible college career, three-time first-team All-American. You played on the Walker Cup in 09 with some studs. I believe you had Max Homa, Michael Kim, JT was on the on the team as well at National Golf Links, correct? No, it was at Marion. Marion, that's right. Oh, I, I, skipped, a, I skipped a team there. Yeah. I was going off They're my memory. That's what I get, yeah. They're gonna be yeah. You were with Ricky's second go-around. Yeah, yeah, Ricky – um Hoff, Peter, Uline, um man, Nathan Smith was on that team. We had a bunch of guys. Yeah. I can't remember the final score, but we uh it wasn't that close the last day. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you play with? Uh I played I played with Ricky and Foursomes and Four Ball. We we won like five and four, I think, the first match. And then oh, our second should. match went down to 18. And I made like a five footer on the last hole to win one up. So that was a, uh, that was pretty fun. And then I tied my, my singles match, um, which I was kind of bummed about not to go undefeated, but we had already won. And I was looking over, I saw guys drinking beer and I was like, all right, let's get this over with. <laughs> let's let's like, let it commence. Uh, one you know? last thing about the, the Walker, like playing on that team. Does that, did that make you like, want to qualify for a president's cup or Ryder cup even more now that you're a professional. Like, I mean, I just feel like playing those team events is just so special. Yeah, absolutely. It was so much fun. You know, such a different experience to be out there. Obviously anytime you represent your country, it's something special. And um, I mean, just the nerves like that. I remember standing on the first tee at Marion the first day and kind of fine warm up. Everything's good. Walking to the first tee. I'm fine. They announce us. I'm hitting the first tee shot and uh, tee the ball up. I grab the club and all of a sudden my hands go numb. And I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> what's going on here? So it kind of took a second to regroup, ended up hitting the fairway, uh, somehow because I still could barely feel the club. I remember Ricky hit it to like 10 feet and then I left the 10 footer short straight up the hill. So that was, you know, obviously all nerves, but you know, it, it's so much fun to be in that that atmosphere as a team and, and definitely something I still want to do as far as playing in a president's cup or a Ryder cup. Didn't you get Ricky in the first round of like the USAM one year? 
Uh, the, I think, yeah. All right. No, it was the USAM at Southern Hills. That's a shit um, first round draw for both of you, by the way. I know. I, I was kind of, I think, like middle, you know, I might have been like 15th or something, and he hadn't played that well the first three days. He was kind of, you know, middle of the bottom, maybe. I don't know what it would be, 50th or 45th or something. So, yeah, I ended up drawing him uh, the first match. And Coach Sewell actually flew up there and, and caddied for me um, during the, the first two days and then the first round. And then I forget exactly what it was, but um, one of his daughters had something going on. He had to fly home, so I ended up getting another caddy. And uh, we won that, that first round match against Ricky, and then I lost the second match. So I, I still think it was – if coach would have stuck around, maybe we would have, could have gave it a deeper run. Blame, blame the coach, the caddy, yeah, of course. Oh, blame, blame the, the caddy, caddy every time. Talk, talk, let's talk a little bit about your golf swing because I mean it's like seriously one of the most simple, pure things. I mean it looks just effortless. Has it, that's something that's always been that way, even since you were a little kid? Yeah, you know it's always been yeah pretty similar. You know, kind of short and compact. Um, you know, I know you already got your short joke out of the way. I don't have the, I don't have the long. <laughs> there was long another one there. We got more, <laughs> dude. It's short and compact, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you go both ways. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, it's a, you know, it's a nice way to play. Not too much can, can go wrong. And, you know, at least hopefully in my swing where, as you both know, in the game of golf, a lot of stuff can go wrong at any moment. So it's nice to keep that simple. Yeah. Uh, you're preaching to the choir, but go like talking about your amateur career. Every guy that I've talked to that played with you during that time, all they talk about is how good you hit it all the time over and over. Like, dude, he was a machine. He didn't draw it. He didn't fade it. Everything was just dead straight. It was like some of the most impressive stuff. I need you to tell the people to give them an idea. The story at the Northeast Am, I believe it was the ninth hole and what you were doing out there and what was going through your head. Oh, um... you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, you got this from Kitty, didn't you? Yeah, um, Kitty. He, yeah. So I, I'd been hitting it pretty well that day, and even in my warm up, I think I hit a couple um, pins on the range, and I got to the ninth hole, and for whatever reason, I just felt like I was going to hit the flag, and so I just aimed a little bit away and hit it up there to whatever. I don't remember how far it was. Hit a pretty good shot, and then. I remember having this thought and wanted to tell someone and Drew and I have always been so close. He's always been like a, you know, like an older brother to me. And so I remember getting done with that round and, and telling him that and him just kind of looking at me like, are you kidding me? You know, like I'm, I'm trying to keep it on the golf course and you're trying not to get flagged, but it was all, he was the only person I thought I could tell that wouldn't, you know, never speak to me again for thinking I was too confident. But it was an honest thought that, that ran through my head. Why didn't you just have one of your guys go tend it? One of the other players in the group say, like, go tend this one real quick from 150. Yeah, 186. Yeah, yeah I, they probably wouldn't have allowed me in any more amateur tournaments, so I would have tried to pull that. I love it. <laughs> yeah, there's a lake short of the green, and he's standing over like a wedge or nine iron, like, ah, I better not aim at the flag here. Could spin back into yeah. the water. I've had a lot of shit go through my head uh, over the golf ball, but hitting the flag, uh, aiming away from it because I'm scared I'm going to hit it wasn't one of them. Yeah, well, that, that was also the last time I ever had that thought, so I got <laughs> well, to Yeah, you ended up leaving school a year early, turned pro, got sponsor exemptions on the PGA Tour, and just absolutely killed it. I mean, for, for people that don't know, I, I, I believe you were number seven that achieved their PGA Tour card through sponsor exemptions. I think a couple more have done it since then. Um, but, I mean, Tom, Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods, to name a few, have done that. What was it like playing those events? I mean, because there's – there's sneaky pressure knowing that you have to get to a certain amount of points or money to get your PGA tour card. Yeah. You know, I, there is, you know, looking back on that, but I, I don't remember feeling that like while I was doing it, I was so excited, you know, just to, you know, basically be living my dream and doing what I wanted to do. You know, I had so much fun in college and it was a huge decision to leave because I, I loved being there. But, you know, once, I was really lucky that obviously I had turned pro when I was playing well, which, which helped a lot. You know, I immediately after NCAAs went and did the qualifier for the U S open in um, Mississippi and made it through. So my first tournament as a pro was the U S open. And I think part of that too, kind of settled me down for that to be my first event on such a big stage. Not that other tournaments seemed less, but I just kind of almost got the big one out of the way and really settled down that summer. And, 
like I said, I was fortunate that I was playing well when I turned pro and it was just kind of a perfect uh, storm of, you know, good things that happened and was able to make enough money to get my card. And as hard as that is to do, like very few people have ever done it. I think you did it the third fastest behind Tiger and Phil. When you're playing as well as you have from like literally the time you're in junior golf through college, you've never you've always been like the guy pretty much. Was it almost like you expected to do that? Like get, a, get your card without ever having to go to Q school because you've always beaten everybody you played against? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, I, I guess I, I never really had those expectations. I guess I knew I was turning pro because I thought it was the best thing, you know, for my game to go play against the best players in the world. I thought that was how I would improve the fastest was kind of what it came down to. But uh, yeah, you know, I mean, you go out there and you know, you've almost never played poorly on that stage. So it's, you know, you're, I had tons of confidence and, you know, once I kind of got a little bit on a roll, um, not that it seemed easy, but I just, I, I felt confident that I could do it. And every day I went out there for every event that I got into that I played, uh, I just expected to play well because I really didn't know anything else at the time. Yeah, well, you did. And your dad also got quite a bit of TV time during that stretch of tournaments. Were you <laughs> at all worried he was going to rip apart a hospitality tent at any moment? <laughs> I was more worried he was going to tear an ACL. I saw him jumping off carts and, you know, running down <laughs> hills trying to, <laughs> to catch up. So he, uh, I was more worried about him getting hurt. But, yeah, I mean, that was a lot of fun, too, just that whole experience. He and I, I think he went to every – tournament but one that summer so you know he and I traveled around and you know was able to you know play well and visit a bunch of new places I'd never been it was just such a, a cool experience I believe the one you did did you finish third at like court of all is that where you played yeah you played well yeah that was the yeah. one I think they showed him on tv more than they showed you hitting golf shots it was fantastic I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. the best ones are when I you know some putt I just missed or lipped out and he's got his hands up yeah. so <laughs> theatrical but yeah he uh yeah, he luckily I don't quite have that same temperament. I don't know if that would work too well as a golfer, but um, it, uh, it was fun to see him. What did you do after that eight event, eighth event when you locked up your tour card? Do you remember celebrating or anything? I mean, that's got to be one, to this day, one of the coolest experiences you've had in the game. Yeah, no, I, I don't really remember celebrating too much, but I do remember the playoff starting and, and just – feeling so left out you know I played a lot that summer and played well I started you know to meet some of the guys and I, I made enough money I forget exactly how it works I, I think I can't remember if I had made enough money before it started but I wasn't technically a member so I didn't get into playoffs and I remember watching those events and just wishing I was there so you know that was um really what I remember the most from finishing and just kind of couldn't wait to get it started and, and get back going again. Just having to take those four weeks off and not play at all was, was like torture for me. Or you five think they weeks need to change that? Because Zalatoris was in the same deal this year. It was like he was rolling out there, but he wasn't a, technically a member. He had to win to get out there. You think that should change? Like if you get out there, and whether it's sponsor exemptions, Mondays, whatever, you get enough points to finish in that top 125, you can play the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see why not. I don't see why that wouldn't be the case. If you, whether you're a member or not, if you get out there and, you know, you have the same or even maybe less opportunity than other guys. If you're in the top 125, then I think you earned your spot to, you know, get in those tournaments and, and play. Well, the only reason they don't do that is because guys from Europe or Australia that don't have status can go, they can qualify for the WGCs and the majors and play pretty well and finish getting that top 125 and go, and go over. So I've always said, I think if you finished maybe top 50 on the FedEx cup, come before the playoffs in the, the year you get in the playoffs but like 125 a lot of those guys could get it just playing playing in the wgc's and the majors yeah or even make it a you know there's a minimum amount of events you have to play five or eight or you know whatever it was where you know it would exclude just playing in those but yeah i get your point yeah and early on in your career you had some interesting roommates you lived with justin <laughs> thomas and tom love lady at a point tell us a little bit about that did everybody have a role in the house who was the cook who was clean who was messy? Tell us all about this this household y'all had. Well, I mean, at that point, we were pretty much all messy. Um, <laughs> I definitely give Tom was definitely the better cook. Um, just, I mean, he won by default because JT and I basically didn't cook at all. Um, but I mean, we we had so much fun. You know, I I wasn't at school with those guys. I just missed them by a year, but got to know them so much um, even before we moved in together and. 
um, just to be there in, in that environment, all, you know, doing the same stuff, traveling and playing and whether it was working out together or, or hanging out at the house. We, I mean, we had countless amount of good times. Yeah, that is a gong show of a household right there. Uh, give us one annoying aspect of each of the roommates, like the messy guy or whatever, JT and Love Lady. Ooh. Um, man, that's, that's tough. I was guessing, I would say Tom falls asleep on the couch watching TV and snores really loud. He f I feels like a snorer no. without ever, ever having been around him <laughs> while he's sleeping, obviously. I feel like no. I can pick him out, though. I no, I don't. I don't remember T Love snoring that much. I mean, honestly, I hate to not have any dirt for you, but I mean, we just had. There really wasn't much to complain about, I and mean, we were all golfing, having a good time. There really wasn't, like I said, to call for me to call anyone messy, especially at that point in my life, would be a little unfair. So, I, uh, I mean, we, we, everything was was pretty great. Yeah, you live you live down there in Jupiter with half the PGA Tour. What are some games like in in the off weeks? Is there a bunch of y'all getting together, playing at a certain place? Is there any many gambling games going on? Yeah, I mean, it, it's not hard, like you said. A lot of guys down here, it's not hard to find a game. Um, you know, I mean, JT loves to play. Ricky loves to play. Um, Berger loves a game. You can text him anytime. He's always down to play. So, you know, I mean, that was the main reason why I came down here was to, you know, I had a, a – good friend group of guys peter uline always loves to play so it's nice to be around people that are kind of doing the same thing as you and i think it's the best practice in the world to be able to come down here and you know there's a bunch of great golf courses and, and play with these guys it doesn't get any better than that where do you fall on that spectrum in terms of like hey i want to go practice or hey i want to get a little game going and get the juices going where, where are you on that yeah i mean if, if i've had you know a few days off i'd maybe like a day to go out and hit some balls and just make sure you know, everything's all right, but I've always enjoyed playing. I think for me, I feel the most prepared going into a week. If I played a couple of rounds, especially if it's a game and, you know, there's something on the line where it, you know, it makes it count. That's when I feel the most prepared is when I get out there and play with the guys. Of the Jupiter guys, you can pick one guy to be your partner in a money game. Who's the best money player? Who would you want? Who is this? I mean, it's hard to um, not go with JT. He's a, uh, he can golf his ball pretty good. Yeah, and he wants to kill everyone he's at good all at times. Golfing. <laughs> I feel like Berger would be a little hustler out Berger's there. Berger's tough. Too. He's yeah. a gnarly one. Yeah. 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 Berger, Berger, he'd probably be honestly my second. Every time I go out and play with Berger, whether it's against him or, or we're on a team, he always plays well. So, yeah, he'd probably there's, be number two. There's guys like Gary Woodland who just don't really like playing and gambling, and they just suck at money games. You know, they're great players. He's super soft. Yeah. But then there's some guys that just, they're, they love the moment. They love playing in the gambling games. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm kind of that way, too. Not that I love or I have to gamble, but it, I think it keeps you a little more engaged, makes it, you know, count for something. You don't want to lose, you know, anything to someone that you see all the time and then give you a hard time about it. So, but. Uh, Losing money it? to friends sucks. Yes, that's which <laughs> yeah. leads to my next question. Who's the most fun guy, the guy you like receiving money from the most? Because, you know, it just pains them. Because we got a few out here. They're like, they're, they're 100, they're 20, whatever is better than others. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I don't. Probably burger. I like having burgers money in my pocket. That, that's, that, that's always a good feeling. Um, I would vote him and then. Who would you say at The Rock? I got uh, one in mind. All of them? Yeah. Well, all of them, of course. But who hates, who hates losing the most, would you say? Well, First off, Rom complains if he loses twenty dollars or twenty thousand. Right. So I and if you can get world number one's money, it's always kind of nice. But probably Harrington. That's two to one. Harrington's is good. He, I feel like he's so accustomed to losing though; it doesn't hurt that much. But oh. Chez, I feel like Chez. Chez, if you win a Hondi bun from Chez, it's like his. I feel like his day. Chez, Chez skips lunch if he, he finishes loses. second the week before and he loses a hundred, and it's like, oh boy. I would have thought one of the guys you'd say I that I oh. I personally I, enjoy down in Jupiter taking money from is Keegan. Yeah, yeah, I've played some with Keegan. I, I see him out at, at Bears occasionally. I haven't been in too many um, games with him. I know we, we went out and played a game at uh, at PGA National. It was last year, the year before, just like the week before the tournament was there. But um, yeah, I haven't haven't been in too many too many games with Keegan. I, I play a lot with Harold, um, but we're always teammates. But if we ever weren't on a team, I'd like having his money in my pocket too. 
<laughs> where are you playing most of your golf? Because there's so many good spots on there that are super close. Where do you, where do you, how do you spread it out? Yeah, I mean, Bears Club's a great place to practice. The practice facility there is, um, you know, I mean, one of the best around here. And then I'm a member up at, at Metals also. And, I, you know, I love to go out there and play. It's my favorite golf course around here. I think it's one of the best. So it's always in great shape. Get out there and um, there's some great short game shots around the greens. Um, definitely don't want to miss any fairways out there. Otherwise, you'll be in a bush. So uh, I think it's that's my favorite place to play. Medalist has 17 great holes. The first hole is absolute bullshit from all the way back. I, I'm just one down through one. I can't get to the fairway. What is it? You can't reach it? It's like 280 yards of the fairway. That's horseshit. You, you just got to check the wind. The walk. It's not downwind. Yeah. You got to cancel. Yeah, guys, my back hurts. I'm out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who won the – you guys played a ninesome during your wedding, right? The wedding party, you guys played a little ninesome at Medalist. Who, who came out on top of that? Because that was a good little golfing crew. Yeah, I think we – or we pushed. It was myself, Wes, and Kitty, and then it was JT – what, JT, D. Paul, and – Somebody, I, I can't even remember the team. So, yeah, we pushed. It was last had to pay first, and then we pushed, and we were having a good time. So we said, you know, the hell with it. Let's go inside. I bet Wes was really quiet yeah, that I bet week. Wes helped a lot on that team. <laughs> <laughs> if you Wes, push with Wes on your team, that's a that's a 10x win. Yeah, well, you know, I, um, you know, I didn't hit too many, and then Wes played all right. And we, we were lucky we had Drew on our team. He kind of He kind of carried us. Yeah, he could go a little bit. But how yeah. how about the wedding though? I know uh, JT told me he was in charge of your rings, and he said he's never been more nervous. How'd that go? That had to be a little uh, gut wrenching. Yeah, no, he uh, he held on to him. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, uh, Christy got him this little bag where he could put them both in, and he kept grabbing his jacket and jingling it to make sure they were still in there. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we you know f- for that for that group of guys you know that I call friends, everything went about as well as it possibly could. <laughs> did, did he have to give a best man speech oh yeah 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 he gave a gave a speech at the rehearsal dinner was so. it good yeah that was terrible it was great um, let's say let's ask that question again because we're going to cut this and you can re-answer was it good huh <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Uh, was he nervous speaking in front of such a large group of people and being on such uh, a big big stage yeah, well, you know, he actually he brought it up to me before because he said that um, he was talking to Jill about it, and Jill couldn't believe that he w- didn't write anything down. He just got up there and, you know, just kind of winged it. And, you know, so we kind of talked about it right before. And not that he was nervous. He was like, I, you know, as you know, I haven't written anything down. And I was like, just make fun of me, talk about how great Christy is, and you'll be great, which is basically what everybody did the whole weekend. So, uh <laughs> that, that's a foolproof plan, plan that's better than gary woodland's recent speech i i'll be honest i love to hate on gary he actually did kill it at his best man speech the fact that he was anyone's best man though gary gave tragic. one bud and basically just talked about himself and thanked everybody for coming out for his u.s open celebration yeah glad he got to like see. the end of it that's what that's <laughs> what gary does yeah but let's let's talk a little bit more about your golf career because you had a number of close calls uh, your career is definitely not over but so far you've had a Quite a few close calls. Is there any tournament you look back on and you think, damn, I kind of let that one get away? Um, yeah, I mean, there's been a few. When I was, I guess it was 2012, when I was playing in Greensboro, I ended up finishing third. Sergio won. Uh, Tim Clark made like a 30-footer from the fringe, from the front fringe uh, to beat me by one. But – I remember just it was kind of the, my first time being in contention. I think had it been a, maybe a little later on, um, or I guess not first time in contention, but I just made a couple of mistakes on the back nine. I made a couple of sloppy bogeys that I thought had I not made, you know, I could have put myself. I guess I was too, I ended up losing my two, but could have been right there coming down on eighteen. Uh, that one kind of stings, but um, you know, other than that, you know, I really haven't put myself in contention as much as I've, you know, wanted to in the past. And that's definitely something I'm looking forward to doing once I get back out there. You slapped me around at the corn Ferry tour playoffs, you dick. Mm. Yeah. I remember you always have that. I, I remember right after that, cause that's when I tore my labrum and had surgery. I think we were, we were down at like mellow mushroom in Jacksonville for, for, <laughs> or I guess that was for the, 
the Corn Ferry Tour Championship. And I remember you giving me a hard time about winning. And I was in a sling with my shoulder. And I was like, well, I'll give you the win. I'll give you this, this yeah, shoulder. Give me your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but up to this point in your career right now, if you had to say this is my most proud accomplishment or this is my favorite memory in golf, what would it be? Oh, man. I mean, that's, I mean, that's almost that's tough. Impossible. Big questions here on Subpar, I mean, dude. Big questions. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, there's Ashley's so many. Ashley's his. He knows. Twin Finn, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Beat Bud and Kitty. That's the upset of the millennium. Oh, yeah. Hey, we all know the big tournament. There's the cornhole tournament. Um, no, I mean, I mean, the whole thing is so great. You know, I mean, even being removed from it this past year, you know, I've had a lot of time to think about what, you know, makes it so great. And, you know, just being out there with all – all your friends traveling around playing a game that you love. I mean, I mean, the whole thing's so great. You know, I obviously going back to how I got my card and, and that summer is probably my, you know, my best memory, you know, traveling, especially with my dad and then my mom there uh, traveling also, it was, you know, that was so much fun. Um, Cause everything was so new and, you know, just new experiences every week and playing well, but, you know, I, I really don't, think about it too much as you said i hope it's it's far from over and hope you get to make a lot more you know great memories going forward what's your what's your favorite stop of the year on the tour Ooh, favorite stop well i'll give two you know the players has always been my favorite event i grew up mostly in jacksonville going there as a kid um so every week or every year i've played that tournament i'm probably the most nervous there than i am any week but um, you know, so that's probably number one, but a close second is, is Phoenix. I love coming out to Scottsdale and, you know, staying with Drew and seeing a bunch of friends I have out there and the whole atmosphere in that tournament is, you know, it's so much fun. I've, I've always enjoyed that a lot. And bud with all like the surgeries and some of the injuries you've gone through now that you're back, like hitting balls, doing things, or as you get back, do you feel like you have to swing it any differently than you did maybe in amateur golf or earlier in your career? Uh, no, no. I mean, luckily, um, you know, I'm not really at that point yet. Um, you know, my, the injuries I've had, especially with my shoulder, it changed my golf swing a little bit, just made it a little bit shorter and, uh, compact. I'm never going to think about that phrase the same again after talking to you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was a little, a little tighter. I'll put it that way. So, you know, I mean, that changed a little bit, but, you know, with this, um, I don't know if there's there's much I could change, you know, that that would help. It's hard to, you know, especially with your ribs and a golf swing, hard to change anything where you're going to use those any less. So, um, you know, I think I think the path I'm on is just trying to fix this and then, you know, go back to playing the way or swinging the way that I was is, is kind of my my best option. You're You're obviously you've been a great player your whole life. I mean, you've been top 100 in the world. But you're, they're in Jupiter. I mean, you've got guys like Roy McIlroy, Justin Thomas, a ton of great players. Do you ever find yourself maybe, you know, learning from them or picking their brain about anything? Yeah, I mean, especially living with, you know, with JT. Um, obviously, he's, you know, I mean, he's played unbelievable for the last however many years now. You know, I would definitely pick his brain about some things. But, you know, for the most part, just I think even just being around those guys and, and getting in those games and playing is – is kind of some of the best ways to learn too. just get out there, see what they do, see how they prepare and practice and, and try to apply some of those things to, to help my game. With the time off, are you still like watching golf on a weekly basis? Do you stay locked in and see who's winning what and all that? Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely will check the score. Sometimes it's hard to, you know, sit down and watch, you know, I definitely miss it a lot. And, you know, there's some days if I, you know, one of my friends are in contention or someone I know is playing well, I'd, We'll definitely tune in and watch. Sometimes it's more frustrating than anything, and I'll <laughs> turn it off and go on a walk. But um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm obviously still I, I love the game and uh, you know and, and love a lot of the guys that are out there. So I, I'm still very up to date on what's going on. Have you developed any new like hobbies or interests? With the time off, you can't play golf. I mean, that's what you're used to doing, sun up to sundown. Any new interests or things that you've become involved in with the downtime? Uh, I mean, some things like around the house, you know, these little, I was changing out some 
receptacles and light switches, you know, I was figuring out some stuff. With electricity. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I handyman, but yeah, you turned into a handyman. Uh, that's <laughs> awesome. Not why well, I, I shocked myself once. And that pretty much was the end of that. Um, but no, it's surprisingly, I'm, I'm pretty good at, at doing nothing. So, <laughs> you know, I, I still, it, it's not like I, you know, even being injured, it's not like you can go on a, a vacation. You know, I, I still like to, to be here to do physical therapy and the movements to get treatment and stuff like that. So it, you know, it doesn't take up my whole day, but, um, you know, my days still revolve around that. Well, we wish you a speedy recovery. We want to see you back out on tour very, very soon. Should we get to the E9, please? We need you back on tour. We need you more importantly at the Twin Fin. That's where every season starts. Yeah. True. We need you there. And if you can't play golf, just come out for the cornhole. Yeah, maybe a little pickleball on the side. Yes, I didn't know if you were up for that just yet. But if your legs are feeling good, yeah. I- we'll be ready. But, yeah, let's get to the E9 here. Start us off, please. All right, here we go, bud. We ask this to everybody. If you can trade lives with one person ever for one day, dead or alive, who do you want to be? Oh, man. West strength. (laughs) No, you'll die. Uh, 24 is all you can take. Man, one day? I don't. This is tough. Uh, You know, uh, Leo looks like he leads a pretty good life. DiCaprio. So Mm. I I might hop in. in Not a bad choice. I think that's the first Leo answer, which is surprising. Because that's what I feel like just default that would be high on the list for any male. Christy probably wouldn't like this too much. But you know what? You got to you got to be you. Bad timing. (laughs) You're going to get that first night on the couch here pretty soon. Get that out of the way. I just want to hang out with uh, with Brad Pitt. Yeah, that's the only reason. (laughs) Oh, it's to get to Brad. Well, you could be him. Yeah, you could. If you wanted to. Yeah, you could have been him. Uh, That was just a. We'll work on that that for your next appearance. To the save. (laughs) All right. Perfect. (laughs) Number two, have you finally started feeding your dog Archie real dog food instead of women's earrings? <laughs> we're uh, yeah, we're working on it. He, um, as the story goes, but it was the first time I ever took Archie anywhere on my own. Go over to JT's house, some people over there. Jill um, is over there also, and then the next moment, Jill's missing an earring. I look over; she's looking at Archie. Can't find this earring. Take him, uh, ended up finding out he had eaten the earring right off of her ear. Took him into the emergency vet, <laughs> um, got an x ray to see this perfect little earring sitting in the middle of the x ray screen. Um, uh, ended up getting it out and no harm, no foul. But yeah, we're trying to move on to things he can digest a little easier. We had just gotten there too, and then you had to yeah. run out. I was like, if he's smart, he runs down to the vet and waits for this dog oh, to pass yeah. his oh, diamond, I, and then he could be like, I have a dog that shits diamonds. How much is this I, thing worth? I, I forgot you guys were there. Shit. Uh, oh. But yeah. Yeah, yeah dude. We, gra- we had just gotten there. I'm waiting on the picture of the x ray from JT right now so we can have this as part of our story on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. I, hey, I, thanks for coming over. You owe me 20 grand. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, I've got a picture. She brought the, after he, got rid of it um she put it in a little pill bottle and handed it to me so i have a picture of the ring had this huge hook on the end of it like that it not would have it would not have been good coming out so i'm glad he uh <laughs> mm. got rid of it another does she still wear those or does she trade those in yeah i, don't, I gave it back to her so <laughs> she's tough she has the option <laughs> i don't care how many times you wash that i have a hard time shoving that in my ear <laughs> after that uh. yeah. All right, next one. What's the most amount of cash you've ever lost in a Jack in the Box to go bag? Oh, <laughs> uh, that would be three thousand um, oh, dollars. That's a good amount. <laughs> yeah, we um, tell them how. Speaking of cornhole at the Twin Fin, Drew and I, um, cornhole partners, end up taking down the whole thing. First prize is three thousand dollars. We're ubering home and uh we decided we want to swing through jack in the box for a little a little midnight snack um drew had the money and so whatever we go through drive through get the food eat the food somehow and then we get to drew's house go upstairs drew asked me if i have the money i say no <laughs> like do you have the money he says no so we a friend of mine comes by, picks us up, and we start chasing after our Uber driver, telling him there's three thousand dollars <laughs> in your car. We know you have it, blah blah blah. And then while we're in the process of trying to chase down this Uber driver, who thinks we're insane, is like, listen, there's no money back here. 
Drew calls his neighbor and goes, hey, can you just go and look in my trash can to see if you happen to see $3,000? So whatever, <laughs> guy walks across the street, goes, well, I got some trash, I got some Jack in the Box, and oh, what do you know, I have $3,000 sitting in this Jack in the Box bag. <laughs> so wow, we, uh, yeah, needless to say, we, we tipped the Uber driver pretty handsomely for our stupidness and, and, and carried on. <laughs> that is an incredible story. Kitty should never be treasurer of anything. I know. Period. Yeah, I know. I know. The old Jack in the Box. Oh, good one. Love that one. Well, we, 3K. We can, we can stay on some twin fin here. We'll go to the next one. What's a bigger surprise to you? The fact that you and your partner, Drew Kittleson, have never won the twin fin pro scratch or the fact that Sleaze and Dre did? Ooh. Um. I mean, y'all are like the favorites every single Probably year. Probably that, as you should, that be. they did. Well, it did. I mean, what Dre made? He finished with a like eagle, eagle, double eagle, double eagle walk off on the last hole. I don't yeah. know. I can barely remember it. Yeah, One forty three downwind gap wedge. I don't know. That's decent. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, you know, we. I don't know if we've really prepared to win any year. We're kind of there just to have a good time. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, we we've had a couple of good runs at it. We finished. I think. Well, I think we might have finished second or third that year. You guys won, and um, I think we finished second again down at the Pro Scratch. So we're we're gaining on it. I just need to get back playing, and we'll uh, get back on our hot streak. I mean, that's a that's a pro pro team. I mean, it's Drew Kittleson can go. Yeah, just get a little jack in the box in. I don't know who deserves more oh, blame, you or Kitty. Honestly. Betting favorites every year. Can't quite get it done. The bright lights aren't for everyone, Colt. You know you've won the damn thing. I'm the only one that I got my name up there twice. Being a legend, you know, immortalized on the wall. It's not for everyone. Gotta get a better pro. (laughs) One of these years. All right, next one. If you had a nickname among, say, a very small group of friends that perhaps was named after a specific model of a Honda, what do you think it would be? Maybe a Civic? Yeah, that's, that sounds right. I was there for part of the Civic yeah. night. <laughs> why, why would your friends call you the Honda Civic, would you say? Well, it's a weird name. You know, I feel like a lot of these stories are kind of revolving around the same thing. But uh, we... <laughs> yeah, we'll get over that. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, one, uh, well, a lot of years ago, we had a weekend down there in, in Old Town, which I know you guys are familiar. And... Um, our bar tab might have tallied up over the course of the weekend where we could have maybe bought a car, perhaps a Honda Civic rather than, you know, do all the the silly things we did. But, um, the, you know. The best part was the champagne bottle. Hey, that was cool. Do that again. Do yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have any bigger ones? Uh, <laughs> I want one that's taller than I am. Uh, this one was. <laughs> This you have anything was. bigger than me? I want that one. <laughs> uh, Honda Civic's a good car, dude. That's a good one. That's a reliable whip. That's a good one to be named after. I feel like at the very least, uh-huh. I just have a parking spot outside of Bevy. So at least I can just pull up there and, you know, good parking. I bet we can get you in you next come time. In January. You don't have to wait in line. You park wherever you yeah. want. <laughs> uh, all right. Out of the guys from Alabama that have made it on tour, which one would you say would, ha- would have had the best chance being recruited by Coach Saban to play football? Ooh. Um, and I need to know what position you think they would play. You know, I'd probably... You could say you. <laughs> yeah, I'd be a pretty good water boy. Um, I don't know. I'd go with... I'll go with Trey Mullinax. He's pretty tall. I, I, I think Trey could be a tight end. He moves pretty fast. That was, I had two. I had Trey Mullinax as a tight end or Tom Lovelady as a nose guard. Yeah, I, I can see T- run stopper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Trey, Trey's athletic. I, I still go with Trey. I'll go with Trey at the, at the tight end. Perfect. Yeah. All right, Trey. Congratulations, you're national champion, <laughs> most likely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good job. You just want to ring. All right, I was going to ask you one about your dog, but we covered that. So I'm going to ask you more nerve wracking shot in the city of Scottsdale: 16 at TPC Scottsdale or the tee shot at the dry heath. <laughs> oh, dry heat. I mean, mm-hmm. for, mm-hmm. you know, when, when you got you guys up there emceeing, 
just bring it up every thing you don't want to get brought up. That, that that's a nerve wracking shot. But I think no you cameras. need to you need to look at it this way. We're preparing you for sixteen. We're making sixteen just a nothing moment. That's a good point. That is, and that, seventeen at Sawgrass. That ain't shit. That, that is a good point. You guys just got to back up the, the tees a little bit, make it a little nine iron, and be about the same thing. We'll work on that. We'll That's work what we on need that. is for it to be harder yeah. <laughs> for all the amateurs that hit it 12 yards. No, I have guys bouncing it into the water. It'll be great. <laughs> all right. Well, earlier, Bud, I asked you, you know, who would you would want to be your partner in a money game down there in Jupiter? Who's the best gambler? I want to know who's the easiest money in Jupiter. Who's the ATM of the group down there? <laughs> Throw them under the bus. Come on. There's got to be Are one. there any? They're all like top hey, 30. Let me tell you this. If you can't think of one, it's probably you, and that's the problem. Mm. Wow, that you just hit me with some truth there. It might be me. I can't think anybody. <laughs> God damn! Now that you bring it up, <laughs> well, shit. Uh, I gotta make sure I I get a little practice in before I start asking for money games. I guess. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. You can't identify the sucker at yeah. the table. I need a couple. Right, of maybe. All right, that's a little self-reflection. That's important. There's a good lesson to be learned in all this. All right, last one, bud. As successful as you've been as a professional golfer, do you ever feel like you should have stuck with your career as a child model for a few more years? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you I, had it. I, you know, I, I did have it back then, but you know, I don't, uh, I don't know if I, if I aged appropriately. So I, you know, at, at least. You know, I think I'll stick with the goal. What were you modeling for is the question. Oh, he was modeling everything, dude. He was like Beckham Jr. Yeah, you name it, I was there. You know, Burberry, Versace, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when did the hoop earring go away, dude? The hoop was hot as a, as a six-year-old. I know. I might, I'd bring it back if I didn't think Archie was going to eat it. But, you know. <laughs> Good point. Good point. It's nice to have a fallback option. I think I can still get something through it if I wanted to, so. I don't know. I, I missed. Oh, the please bring one. it back. Maybe, maybe next year I'll be a pirate and I'll throw a hoop in there. Oh, please, please do to. for everyone. <laughs> awesome. Well, Bud Collie, you're the best man. Get healthy. We want to see you back out on tour soon, but we really appreciate you coming on with us. Yeah, thanks, guys. I enjoyed it. All right. Well, that was Bud Collie joining us on Golf Sub Parsley. I mean, it, he's on a very, very short list. I believe he was number eight of guys. To get his PGA Tour card through sponsor exemptions. He's never had to go through the Tariff Q School. No, he has no appreciation for the jickies, the scar tissue that's built up after years of whiffing at Q School. He just bypassed all that. Did it like in the like second fastest, I believe, all time. Just cruised through that deal. And the story about that he was talking from Amherst. I mean, he was so good in Amherst Golf. Still so good. Just got to get healthy. But the story from the Northeast Dam, dude. He, he's a very humble guy, so he really didn't do it justice. But like he, there he was sitting in the fairway with the wedge. Drew Kittleson, our good friend, great amateur player as well, was ahead of him. And Bud's normally hitting just lasers into these things. He pulls one like 25, 30 feet left of the hole, and they pass as they're walking to the next tee. And, and Bud walks up. He's kind of got this little smirk on his face. And Kitty's like, dude, what was that? And he's like, I don't want to tell you. He's like, what? He's like, I got to the top of my swing and thought, man, I don't want to hit the flag stick. And so he like pulled it on purpose. I mean, that's when you know your shit is pretty dialed in when you're like, I need to avoid hitting the flag stick here because there's a lake short. He's got a dude, beautiful ball nice. swing. It just It's on repeat. Hardly ever misses the center of the club face. Always one of my favorite guys to play with out there, even though he did take me down out on the Corn Ferry Tour finals in the first yeah. event in Indiana. A little bastard shot 65 on me. I mean, I had the lead, and I shot 67, Slees. What are you going to do? Yeah. Sometimes you just run up against a little superhuman named Bud Collie. He's also really good at cornhole. He and Kitty tend to thrive in that uh, the cornhole. At the jack-in-the-box story yeah, they is won, incredible. <laughs> they won the three racks, as a lot of guys do. Had a good time. Go out there, get a little jack-in-the-box late in an Uber, as you do, and then just left it. Yeah. Fitting in there. He needs Had to go dig it up. He needs a few of those bags when he goes to Old Town. It gets a little expensive for Bud Collie. They, they roll out the red red carpet when old buddy boy shows up. But always fun with our man Bud Collie. But Sleaze, it's time to get in to FanDuel, the number one sports book in all the land. And in my opinion, you know, the PGA Tour season is taking a break until 2022. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, we had a pretty good year. We gave a lot of great picks out there, had several winners. I think we need a little pat on the back. Free money to be handed out, and uh, this is what Thanksgiving's all about, dude. Holiday season, it's the time to share with family, give thanks, and also just make a shitload of money betting 
first half unders, same game parlays, all the fun stuff. And we are going to give our listeners a little thank you as well because we got a subpar and fan duel giveaway promotion that is live through Sunday, November 28th. All you have to do is create a new sportsbook account using promo code subpar and place your first bet to be entered to win one of three Birdie Juice Rock Form speakers. I know my man out there, he's going to be entering this one. There's three of these. Three beautiful Birdie Juice Rock Form speakers up for grabs. All you got to do is enter, enter our, our contest. That's all you got to do. You want those birds out there with you while you're making tweeters? This is it. Okay, right well, here. Three of them. In addition to being entered for the speaker, there will be a great new customer offer you can use this holiday week that makes it worth joining FanDuel Sportsbook. Up to $1,000 match on your first bet. 30 to 1 enhanced odds on NFL on any NFL team during Thanksgiving Day and a special Black Friday offer starting the day off with the match on Friday. We will have more details on that for you on our social channels. The NFL thing, 30 to 1. About to get a little excited. Five dollar max bet. So think just, I taste that? Yeah, yeah I just, still taste it though. 30 to 1, anything, I'm in. Doesn't yeah. matter. Well, go check it out. A lot of cool things. We got to get you ready for the match. But like I said, we will have more details on our special. Coming up this Friday on our social channel. Sleaze, I know you love FanDuel. You're always on it. Tell us some of the things you love about it. Uh, same game parlays. To summarize it in three words. They're my new favorite thing in betting. You don't have to wait all day to see if your parlay hits. You can get it right there in one game. Boom. Stats, player props, whatever you want to do. I am loading on these things. It's legit my new favorite thing to do. Every single NFL game I'm watching, if I'm sitting down and locking into something, basketball, I do it too. Uh, I just I just fire those off and you get big odds and you don't like I said you don't got to wait eight hours to see if your parlay hits or it doesn't it's just right there. So if you don't have an account, go to FanDuel Sportsbook, log in, ten minute ten dollar minimum deposit required, no big deal, and you get a chance to win a speaker, all kinds of thirty to one enhanced odds, you know thousand dollar free bet basically. What are you waiting for? Go to FanDuel and get get amongst it, please. A lot of ways to win and a lot of action. Even though there's no official tour event this week. A lot of ways to get paid. Even in the golf world, we got the match, BG, coming up. Mm -hmm. Longly, or excuse me, long anticipated, you know, a lot of banter back and forth between these two. They were talking a lot of smack. Then they came together and were buddies at the Ryder Cup, made amends, and then now they're back at it again. They're teeing it up at Wynn Golf Club this week. Brooks Kepka, Bryson DeChambeau. 12 holes. That's all we need. We're going to figure it out in 12. 12-hole 12 hate match. Bryson going off at minus 126. Brooks, minus 102. Where's a fellow like yourself right, place well, the wager? You know, we're, we're a team here, and we want to make everyone out there money. It'd be very easy for us to pick each pick one side and be like, hey, we gave, we gave it winner. to you. That's so, actually smart. Let's do that. That is. But, you know, I think Bryson is very much into this thing. We've seen him recently up on top of the wind, hitting golf balls with Brooks's face. You know, we recently had Brian Zurif, who created the match on our Sirius XM show. Talking about how, listen, these guys actually hate each other. He's got a chance to spend time with both of them. They hate each other. This isn't a money grab. They want to absolutely go out there and beat the other one. No one wants to be the loser in this match. And therefore, the guy, you know, I have a little bit of concern. It was recently announced. Brooks Kepka switched. Switching gear. Switching clubs. He's going to be playing them at the match. So that'll be interesting to see. So I'm going to go with a guy who I think is just a little bit more into it. Bryson DeChambeau at minus 126. I think he might be more into it. I also think he's just playing better golf right now. Uh, when, in talking with Brian Zurf, he was saying earlier in the week, you know, uh, Bryson was out there, track man, all that, probably rap soto, and he was hitting 220 ball speed. Now, I'm not saying he's going to get it up to that when he's actually gaming out there, but I don't care if it's even close to that. In Vegas right now, warm weather, he's going to be hitting missiles. And he's just playing better golf, in my opinion, than Brooks right now. I don't know if Brooks is disinterested or what. Tends to ramp up during major time. He's going to care when he gets out here. You can't say they don't care. You put him on national TV, grudge match like this. Either the effort level will be high. But uh, I, I'm going. I'm aligned with you on this. I'm going to take Bryson at minus 126. I'm going to probably hammer it pretty good, too. As you should. Yeah, why that's wouldn't what I? we do? Well, now, and we're also going to give you one of our well, things where, where we, what we really know what we're talking about, and that's a football bet. This is where we thrive. Bet, this is where you, where you really want to listen and pay attention here. It's got to be a Thanksgiving Day game to hit the 30-1 to 1 odd boost. I'm going with, surprise, surprise, my Dallas Cowboys to bounce back after a rough outing against the Kansas City Chiefs. We're playing the Las Vegas Raiders. They're in sh they're, they're falling apart. They they're, can't go a, a week without having something off the yeah. field. Having they're this, they're this minus seven. So let's roll, let's roll with America's team, the boys. I minus figured seven. you would. I figured you would go with Dallas. I'm going to go with another team looking for a little bounce back. One of the best teams in the NFL, in my opinion. The Buffalo Bills are minus four at the Saints right now. So they're coming off a bad loss. Probably the worst game they've played all season. I look for them to bounce back, get right against the Saints, see the Bills that we've seen of old Josh Allen doing what he does, spinning it, running, doing all this stuff. I'm going to go with Bills minus four. So we're taking two favorites. I don't always love to do that, but I'm actually fairly confident in this one. So. All right. 
Bryson, Cowboys, Bills. Load up, make some cash. And if you've never tried FanDuel Sportsbook, what are you waiting for? Go to FanDuel.com slash subpar or download the FanDuel Sportsbook app to get started. Be sure to sign up with promo code subpar so they know that we sent you. Must be 21 years and older and present in Arizona, Connecticut, or New Jersey. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona or 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org backslash chat in Connecticut or 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey. All right, Sleaze, well, that's going to do it for this week's episode. want to wish you, your family, and all of our listeners out there a very happy Thanksgiving. Love everything y'all do. Really appreciate it. Same to you. Enjoy the week. Looking forward to uh, getting after it. And this is the week. Enjoy friends. Enjoy family. Smash FanDuel. Win a bazillion. And you might as well go to the golf.com pro shop and pick out some gear. We got a bunch of new stuff coming. Black Friday's coming. Holidays are coming. There's nothing that says I love you more than some get amongst it or birdie juice gear to a loved one. Just my personal opinion. All right. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. We'll talk to you on next week's Golf Subpar. Bye.